gave us in the book of Acts chapter 15 teaches this. Let's see the task at hand and how this process is going to go down. Amos chapter 9 verse 11 said, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David, the fallen hut or boot, amen, and close up its breaches. And I will raise up its ruin, and I will build it as in the days of old. No, pay close attention. So God said, in that day, I'm going to raise up the tabernacle of David, the fallen boot. Now look at verse 12. Where is he raising it up? And why is he raising it up? That they may possess, amen, look closely, the remnant of Edom. Why is, it, why is he raising it up? To possess. To possess. All of the land where the Edomites were dwell. Mm -hmm. Because in Malachi he said, I don't care how much they build the Edomites. Because of their attitude and the wrong government, I'm going to tear it down. But he said, I'm going to re rebuild David's house. So they can possess what? All that the Edomites possess. Amen. You see, all those that are building in their selfishness just for themselves and taking... Keep destroying their brothers and sisters in order so that they can be more successful and don't care who they step upon or what they have to do to be succeed. God said, I am raising up the house of David to take over all their possession. This is why he said, they bail in vain only to pass it to the righteous. You understand this? This is why he said, we, we actualize it in the book of Hebrews, said, be happy with your possession. He goes, I don't want you to be like an Edomite. I will give you everything you need. If I take care of the grass, I'll take care of you. But I definitely do not want you to have the attitude of an Edomite. This is why we actualized this morning with Mama. You understand? Be satisfied with your present circumstances. Mm. Why does he say that? Is it he don't want you to have more? No, he don't want you to have an attitude that will make you destroy others to get what you want. He wanted to always consider others, consider righteousness, consider him before you do what you are planning to do. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Edomites don't consider that. They don't consider that. Yes. So he said, I am raising up the tabernacle of David to take their possession. Are you listening to me? Look at somebody and say, we are a part of the house of David. We are a part of the house of David. And I'm going to show it to you. So he said, on that day... That they may possess the remnants of Edom and of all the nation that are called by my name, mm. say the Lord who does this. Amen. This is the time Ziglag is raising up to repossess. Now, why were they repossessing? You were Lord this in Ziglag. What did David do as he take back everything? He distributed across mm. the nice. kingdom. Yes. Did David just repossess everything and keep it? No. No. Even those who couldn't, who got tired and couldn't go into war. Mm -hmm. They would say the same share we have, they are having. But he didn't stop them. The Bible says he sent to Judah and he said, he sent it right around. Yeah. Mount Zion repossesses for distribution. Amen. It's not so we can go, look how rich I have. Look how much cars I have. Look how much. No, 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 no. Those are Edomites' attitudes. That's why the world is the way it is. As mm -hmm. Pastor Chow said. 1% controlling 95% of the wealth. That's just crazy. That's even my business. Mm -hmm. God said, no, I'm going to rebuild something that's going to do it according to the kingdom. You see, in a kingdom, you see, a king is not glorified if one part, there's no ghetto in a kingdom. Everything is glorious. Mm -hmm. When you look into heaven, the star is glorious. You understand? And the sun is glorious. Everything is glorious. You see? But in Mount Esau, not so. Mm. So God will have a problem with how this process works. The Bible said, verse 13, Behold, the days are coming. Say the Lord, this is when the tabernacle, amen, the Zionites will take over. Amen? Say the Lord, that the plowman, those that are plowing, taking over, overtakes the reaper and the treader of the grapes, him who sows the seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Amen? That is everything, therefore, barren, amen, and unfruitful shall overflow with spiritual blessing. Amen? The new tabernacle of David is a spiritual house. Yes. Amen. Those whose spirit are strong, those whose spirit move in alignment with the Lord's purpose, the Lord's plan, the Lord's thoughts, and the Lord, those who don't live for themselves. Mm. 
They live for the glory of God. They live to be everything God wants them to be. And they live to help their fellow man. They're not Edomites. They're not from Mount Esau. They're from Mount Zion. Go to the book of Acts chapter 15. It's the same prophecy. Acts chapter 15, 15 to 18. You must be aware of the inappropriate attitude and very clear on what the Lord is looking for in the season and the time. Amen. And then you must know if this period he's talking about is at hand. And with this, the prediction of the prophets agree, as it is written, after this I will come back and will rebuild the house of David, which has fallen. I will rebuild it, very ruins, and I will set it up again, so that the rest of men may, now look why he's doing it too, verse 16, amen, or verse 17, so that the rest of men may seek the Lord, mm. and all the Gentiles upon whom my name has been invoked. So all who just put his name Christ in. The reason, one of the reasons he wants to give you, you understand, all of the Edomites' possession, and why he give you Christ, so men will seek him, Amen. so they will see how Zionites operate it. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Part of he giving you the spirit, the same spirit that Jesus had, you notice when Jesus walked the earth, he was like a rock star. Every man seek him, you understand, to find what? The Lord. So he give you the same spirit, so men will seek the Lord when they see how you operate. How you operate in the possession of the Edomites, of Edom, of Mount Esau. When they see and they hear, like Solomon, about your good tiding, your generosity, and your love, and your mercy, and your thoughtfulness, and your consideration, mm. is what Mama is talking about. Mm. There will be a great weight on this church this year. Mm. The weight is we got to do more. There's some things coming down the pipe. We start meetings back probably in the next week or so. You, our mind has, it can't be like an Edomite. It has to be like a Zionite. One who is understanding the time, the season, and the task at hand. Amen. Your mind can't be in you. Amen. Your mind has to be, what do I need to do so that people will seek what? The Lord. Amen. If you understand this, you understand the house of David. If this is not a concern of you, you're not a child yet, you're not ready yet for spiritual business or the bottom line is what the Bible calls the plow man. You're not ready to be the plow man yet. Mm. You're not ready to do work yet. The reaper. You understand? You're not ready. You're, you're a kid. Kids, kids can't plow a field. Mm. A plow is a little bit dangerous. Mm. Because Christ told us, he said, when you lay hold of the plow, don't ever what? Look back. Right. Mm. So when Christ called you, why is he calling you? What did he say? I am calling you to lay hold of what? The, the plow. plow. I am calling you, you understand, to rebuild all of the destroyed wasteland of the Edomites. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches in Amos 9, you understand, 11, he said, I'm going to give all that wasteland to you. Amen. So you can what? Rebuild. Amen. So all the things that they destroyed, God put them in your hands to beautify. Amen. I'm sorry, he didn't call us to play. He's not calling us to say, hey, come let's play clap in hands. No, you have been called to work. You have been called to beautify, to make that which is in bondage and has become barren and have not produced the vegetation. What did the Bible say in verse 30? Everything that was unfruitful will become what? Fruitful. Everything that was hidden will be what? Come forth. This is why you're called. You are called. Go back and read all the texts that I give you carefully. Read Amos carefully. Amen. He said the sweet dew. All the uncultivated land shall bring forth its fruit. I call you to lay hold of the plow. You're a plowman. I'll say it different. You are specialized through the Spirit of God in production. Do you understand? Yes. You are very good at making things productive. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I am part of the productive team. I'm part of the productive team. To bring glory to God. To bring glory to God. One of the things the Spirit put great weight on in my spirit is like, what are you doing in the church? Amen? To make man seek the Lord. The Bible teaches us this. It said, so that the rest of men may seek the Lord. Amen? There are those who seek Him already, but what about the rest that don't? Mm. 
Many people we know, one of the reasons that do not seek the Lord, because the sons and daughters of God do not know to operate as a plowman. Amen. They do not know to operate as a Zionite. Yes. Many of them, they are Zionite, but operate like Edomites. Yes. So the world look at them and say, you're just like me. You know exactly what I do. Why would I change? Why would I seek your Lord? Why would I seek your God? What is different about you? What? Still struggling in the blood, back and forth. I say and I use the blood. I say and I use the blood. The, after the resurrection, operating as the plowman, that will happen. Mm. People struggling. They can, you, they're struggling. You are struggling. What's different? No. What they want to see. What does the plowman do? The plowman brings an harvest. Amen. The plowman is productive. Amen. The plowman is effective. Yes. The plowman stands an opportunity. In a great harvest, where is the glory? Is the glory when there's the barrenness? No, there's glory when there's great what? Harvest. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Look at somebody and say, we must learn to walk in the resurrection. We must learn to walk in the resurrection. The new man. The new man. The one that has been called. The one that has been called. So that the rest of man. The rest of man. That are spectators. That are watching the church. Can come to God. You have to understand this. Are you listening? They will have their feel and nothing growing, but you will just be plowing it up. They ain't getting no harvest, and you are getting a harvest, the Bible says, more than you have rooms that can what? Hold. Hold. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus. The Bible teaches us, please know the time at hand. Mm. Amen. Amen. So that the rest of men may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name has been. Amen. Invoked. Invoked. Verse 18 say, <coughs> says the Lord who has been making these things known from the beginning of the world. Are you listening, church? Mm -hmm. The Lord is rebuilding the tabernacle to take mm -hmm. over the possession, the scripture said, of what? Edom. Now, if you remember Jacob, the two of them had become so big that they literally covered the world. Yeah. Like it's one of the east and one of the west. But God said, nothing on this side I'm going to allow to grow. But the whole earth is still what? His. All the unfruitfulness that he is there now is still his. So he said, I'm going to raise up the house of David to take over this side. Mm. The question is, are we in that period of time? Are we there or are we not? We know. We understand. It's task. We understand. It's focus. We understand. It's decree. Mm. Yes, we understand the position. We understand the attitude. Here we need to find out something. Are we the generation he's talking about? Mm. 